In today's video, we're gonna be building the easiest, best bang for your buck 5,1 cheese grater Mac Pro for 2020. So let's say you're looking for a Mac OS desktop and you want to do video editing or animation or AutoCAD or something of that sort, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, let's say $500. You pretty much have four main options. You can buy a cheese grater Mac Pro like one of these, you can buy an iMac, you can buy a Mac Mini, or you can build a Hackintosh. Each of those has its advantages and disadvantages. The Mac Mini is going to be by far and away the most portable. I mean, look at this thing, it's not small. Then you've got an iMac, which is going to have the added benefit of coming with a built-in display, quad-core processors, and you can definitely find one with dedicated graphics at that price. However, you are gonna be limited because you're not really gonna have a lot of upgradability. Let's say you get a late 2013 iMac with a Core i5 or an i7, you're gonna have GTX 7 series graphics, which aren't great, and you can't upgrade the display. Or you can build a Hackintosh, and that gives you really the most freedom and the most modern hardware, let's be honest. For 500 bucks, you're not gonna get a modern Mac, but you can probably build a modern AMD-based PC that would be Hackintoshable and run Mac OS, Although, that's gonna be a lot more involved and requires upkeep and maintenance to make sure compatibility stays going and to make sure your machine is stable. And that's why I think for a lot of people, the 5,1 Mac Pro makes a ton of sense. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You have the upgradability and the customization that you would get with a Hackintosh, or at least some of it, and you also get at least some of the official support of Mac OS and the ease of not having to Hackintosh your system. So when I say you have a lot of customization, you can get pretty in-depth on these Mac Pros. You can install a PSU mod that allows you to plug in really powerful graphics cards like the Radeon 7. You can put in dual six core CPUs, 128 gigabytes of RAM, pretty much as much storage as you want. There's a lot of options that you can do with this machine and they can get pretty expensive and pretty in-depth. However, what we're gonna do today is try to find a balance between something that you can upgrade yourself and also something that's gonna be so easy. So for this video, I bought this very, very standard run-of-the-mill 2009 4,1 Mac Pro. This one is upgraded with 16 gigabytes of RAM, it has a one terabyte hard drive, and it has the base quad-core whatever processor. It really doesn't matter, these processors are cheap and old and we're gonna get rid of it anyway. Now, I ran Cinebench, it scores about 990, which is not bad. It's definitely a passable machine if you wanted to just use it like this. However, we wanna do a little bit more with it. So, we're gonna be giving it some upgrades. So, there's three main upgrades that we're going to be doing today. The first is this Xeon X5675 six-core 12-thread processor. This is going to be a pretty substantial performance boost over the Nehalem quad-core. This is a Westmere six-core, and this processor literally cost $20. There's a whole bunch of different CPU options that you can put in these things, and I'll have a link down below to CPU compatibility so you know which one to look for. The X5675 is, in my opinion, one of the best options because it's very cheap and is going to offer similar performance to the more expensive but not necessarily higher performing CPU options. The next thing that we're gonna do is double the storage with this one terabyte solid state drive. So we're gonna have a one terabyte SSD and a one terabyte hard drive. That's another advantage of these Mac Pros over an iMac or a Mac mini. You can add pretty much as much storage as you want. Now you could also install an NVMe SSD with a PCIe adapter, but I went for this to save a little bit of money. And finally, we're gonna be putting in this AMD RX 580 four gigabyte that I paid $90 for. It's kind of crazy that you can get an RX 580, even though it's a four gig for $90. And I think this is gonna be a pretty good upgrade over the GT120. And by think, I mean no for a fact because the GT120 sucks. So those are the three upgrades that we're gonna be doing to this machine, but we're also gonna need a few parts and tools. So the first one is this 3.5 millimeter hex wrench. We're gonna need this and it has to be a long one like this to get the heat sink off. We're also going to need thermal paste. 
when we put in the new CPU. And finally, the thing that was actually the most annoying to come across, this PCIe power adapter. Now, by default, the GT120 that's in this Mac Pro runs off the slot. It doesn't need any external power. However, this RX580 obviously does. And the Mac Pro has two mini six pin connectors on the logic board. So the slot and each of those six pins can support 75 watts of power delivery, which is more than enough for this RX580. However, the problem is I don't want to use one mini six pin to the four pin that this needs because then I'm gonna overload the connector on the logic board. So I had to find this dual mini six pin to single four pin. And it took like three weeks for this to get here. If you wanna simplify the process a little bit, find a graphics card that has two six pin connectors because those are pretty easy to find. The mini six to the normal six. All right, so those are the parts that we're gonna to need to make this build possible. And without any further ado, let's hop into it. So I'm gonna take you guys through this upgrade in the order that I think is most efficient. And we're gonna start by upgrading the storage by adding in this SSD. Now, realistically, if you wanted to do this properly, you can get these SSD drive sleds because by default, let me just unlock these. By default, these are meant for three and a half inch drives and they're not really meant for a two and a half inch SSD. It's not a huge deal though. I basically just put the SSD in there and just kind of let it dangle. It's probably not the best, but I'm an idiot. All right, so the SSD is in now, and the reason that I started with the storage is because this is a 4,1 2009 Mac Pro. There's really no major hardware differences between the 2009 and the 2010s. The only major difference is the dual CPU version has delitted processors on the 2009 and normal socketed processors on the 2010. We don't really have to worry about that. For the single processor variant, it really doesn't matter. So I would generally recommend buying a 4,1 because they're less expensive and the upgrades are the same. Now, if you do buy a 4,1, you'll want to flash the firmware to 5,1. It's very easy. It's just a simple tool that you can run. I've got a tutorial linked in the description below if you need help with that. The first thing that we're gonna do now that the SSD is in is upgrade the processor. So that's a pretty simple task. We just have these two pull tabs over here and the CPU tray comes out and we can get to work. So here's the CPU tray. And as you can see, we have five screw holes up here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a long 3.5 millimeter hex wrench. We're gonna need that because as you can see here, it has to get all the way down there. And just like that, the heat sink comes off. So now we're going to pull out the old quad core CPU and I'm going to wipe off the thermal paste from the underside of the heat sink and we'll put in the new processor. And with the CPU back in, all we have to do now is upgrade the graphics card. Now I'm gonna be actually removing the GT120 because once I have it all together, I'm gonna be upgrading to Mojave and you can't have the GT120 in for that. Now that does mean that we're going to lose the boot screen because I didn't buy an EFI flashed graphics card. If you do buy one of those, then you'll hold on to the boot screen, the boot switcher. It'll cost more money, but you'll have a little bit more convenience but for this purpose, I'm just gonna remove the GT120 and go 580 only in this device, and then I'm gonna upgrade to Mojave. Now, in order to remove the graphics card is very simple. There's a retaining bracket over here with two thumb screws that comes out, and then all we have to do is slide this little mechanism over, and that releases the graphics card, and now we can just pull it right out of the machine, and here is our GT120. Terrible, terrible card. It's really bad. Then all we have to do is put in our PCIe power adapter and it's time to grab this RX 580. This is going to be a major upgrade. 
This card evidently was very well maintained. It still has the covers on all the ports and the PCIe slots, so that's pretty nifty. Oh, I almost forgot. We have to pull out another one of these PCIe placeholders because this is a double slot card, whereas the other one was just a single slot. So now we are ready to go. And we're in. Let's go ahead and lock it and we'll screw in the bracket here. And then we just have to plug in our power. There we go. Look at that. We've done it. The cheapest, easiest, best bang for your buck, whatever you want to call it, Mac Pro. That did not take very long to do those upgrades. So now all that's left to do is boot it up, uh, install Mojave on the SSD, and we're good to go. Really, this is no harder to work on than a normal PC. And unlike a Hackintosh, you don't have to worry about, you know, every different version of Mac OS requiring you to make tweaks, change texts, stuff like that. That I know for a lot of people isn't really a problem. For a lot of people that comes naturally. But if you want a reliable workhorse that you can just pop a graphics card in, upgrade the CPU and just call it a day, that's this. That is the 5.1 Mac Pro. Now, before we discuss the value of a project like this, let's go over some of the performance figures to see how this thing stacks up to other Macs that you might be looking at. First off, we'll compare our upgraded computer to the way it was before all the upgrades, and it's a bit laughable. Before with our quad core processor, we were struggling to hit 1000, it was like 990, but now very easily we're hitting about 1550 which is a very significant gain, considering that this upgrade was only $20. Now, speaking of significant gains, let's take a look at the Unigen Heaven scores, because I have a feeling it's going to be dramatic. Yeah. So the RX 580 absolutely dumps on the GT120. I know I said that that card was bad, but holy crap, it scores 40. That's just, I can't even think of a worthy analogy. It's so bad. Now, if we go back to the CPU for a moment, you might be surprised at some of the Macs that we're able to compete with. The late 2013 15-inch, a solid computer that would be probably one to $200 more than this. We are beating that. A 27-inch Core i7 2013 iMac, that would definitely be 100 or $200 more expensive. We're still beating it. We're even getting close to a 2019 13-inch quad-core MacBook Pro. Now, granted, that isn't exactly a performance machine. It has integrated graphics. It's a U-series i5, but that gives you an idea of the kind of performance that this thing is packing. When you're talking about CPUs, there are some inherent limitations to this computer. It's 10 years old. You're not gonna be able to get modern processors in this thing. But where this really excels is in the graphics department because we can put whatever card we want in this. This shows itself very clearly in Unigen Heaven. You can see we're able to pretty much score on par with a 27 inch iMac equipped with Radeon Pro 580X graphics, as well as the base model 16 inch MacBook Pro with 5300M graphics. Even the current generation $6,000 base model Mac Pro will come with pretty much this exact same GPU. I don't know if that says more about the good value of this or the bad value of that. On a more practical note, I did run some tests in Final Cut Pro, and I have to say, this is a very competent machine. It is very easily able to keep up with a 4K timeline, provided, of course, you let it render out. If you're trying to play back unrendered, non-proxy or original content in your timeline, it's not gonna run very well. However, render times on this thing are surprisingly solid because Final Cut now takes better advantage of metal-supported graphics cards, and because this is a pretty decent card, we're able to compete with a lot newer machines. We're actually beating the 12-core Mac Pro, which can cost like three or four times as much as this computer did, and we're even beating out the ever-popular mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is, again, almost twice as expensive. So the overall value of a computer like this, to be honest, just being able to upgrade the graphics with standard cards and put in as much storage as you want makes this an incredibly versatile machine. 
And even when you compare this thing to building a Hackintosh, it still has merits. Now granted, I'm not saying that this is less expensive than a Hackintosh. You can 100% build a more powerful Hackintosh for $485 than this Mac Pro. But as I said at the beginning, the goal here was something that's easy. And this is really, really easy. So that's gonna do it for this video. I've linked any relevant support information, parts links, stuff like that is all down in the description below. So check that out. If you're looking to do a build such as this, let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think this was a good value or not? Let me know that stuff down in the comments below. As usual, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please consider following me on Twitter at Luke Miani, and don't forget to check out my subreddit. And with that, I will see you all in the next video.